You're watching Tag TV. You're watching Tag TV. Hello, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Two Lashkar terrorists nabbed by Indian security forces. India and Russia reaffirm their strong stance against Pak terrorism. As US announces progress in peace agreement, Taliban attacks ensure no peace in Afghanistan. And Indian intelligence agencies sound alert in Indian states, fearing new terror ploy. Exposing Pakistan's nefarious agendas against India, the Indian Army apprehended two Pakistani nationals associated with lashkar e taiba in Kashmir. The arrested Pakistani terrorists were trying to infiltrate into India through Kashmir. Khalil Ahmed and Nazim Kokar, the two Pakistani nationals, have split the beans on the vicious intentions of Pakistan and said that the country's army is training terrorists from various terror outfits with clear instructions to target Indian security forces after infiltrating into Indian territories. We have a report. <laughs> Pakistan is desperate to infiltrate maximum terrorists into Kashmir Valley. Announcing the arrest of two Pakistani nationals affiliated with banned terrorist outfit lashkar e Toiba, the Indian Army this week reaffirmed the fact that a desperate Pakistan was pushing infiltrators into the valley to carry out terrorist activities. Two Pakistani citizens who belong to proscribed terrorist outfit lashkar e Toiba were apprehended live by the Indian Army. The Indian Army had arrested Khalil Ahmed and Nazim Kokar, the two Pakistani terrorists, few weeks back in Kashmir. After an elaborate interrogation session with the two Pakistani nationals, the officials of the Indian Army released a confession video of the lashkar affiliated terrorist in a recently held press conference in Srinagar. In the video, the duo is clearly seen stating that they belong to Pakistan and were infiltrated into Kashmir to carry out extensive terror activities.
میں اور خلیل پکڑے گئے آپ بھی کانچے باندھ میں دس سے پندرہ مجاہد پاک آرمی کی مدد سے ہندوستان کے ہندوستان پر گھسپیٹ اور حملے کی فراغ میں ہیں Lieutenant General KJ S Dillon, Indian General Officer Commanding 15 Corps informed the media that Pakistan is consistently pushing terrorists into Kashmir to disrupt peace in the valley and these two videos are a living proof of those attempts. These two videos very clearly show how Pakistan, the Pakistan army and the citizens of Pakistan are being pushed into Kashmir valley to undertake the terrorist activities inside the Kashmir valley to disrupt the peace which is prevailing. especially after 5th of august the confession by khalil and nazim about their infiltration through kacharban launching pad near pakistan army posts at line of control has reinstated india's claim that pakistan is using terror launch pads in pok to invade terrorists into india all the launch pads as of now are full and infiltration attempts are being made every day to infiltrate the terrorist into kashmir valley to disrupt peace in one such attempt on 21st of august we have apprehended two pakistani nationals baffled by indian government's progressive decision on kashmir on 5th august pakistan is utilizing all kinds of illicit and unwarranted methods to provoke violence in kashmir Since Islamabad does not hold a diplomatic say in the internal affairs of India therefore it is using the route of terrorism to disrupt peace in the valley for all the contemporary historical reasons that the world is aware of Pakistan continues to remain obsessed with the cable at every international fora it makes up the cable Kashmir issue earlier it did it in Maldives where it got badly snubbed and now it's done it in the UNICEF meeting in Colombo Here once again Pakistan has been badly snubbed. There are no takers for Pakistan's agenda. The entire world realizes and accepts that Kashmir is an internal problem of India and Pakistan has no local standard whatsoever. That notwithstanding, Pakistan continues to hammer at the Kashmir issue, indicating a huge amount of desperation on the part of Pakistan. Pakistan has long waged a proxy war against India using terrorists. Pakistani forces keep violating ceasefire across the line of control in a bid to provide cover to terrorists looking to infiltrate into Jammu and Kashmir. India's zero tolerance policy towards terrorism and the valor of Indian security forces have however thwarted the despicable intentions of Pakistan. The issue of Pak sponsored terrorism in India's union territory of Jammu and Kashmir formed a larger dialogue between India and Russia. during the 20th bilateral summit in russia although no direct references were made against pakistan the two premiers indian prime minister narendra modi and russian president vladimir putin reaffirmed to combat terrorism in all its forms and manifestations here is a report in view of escalating maneuvers undertaken by pakistani terrorists to destabilize peace in india and other south asian countries a joint statement was recently issued after a dialogue between indian prime minister narendra modi and russian president vladimir putin the joint statement largely referring to pakistan strongly condemns terrorism in all its forms and manifestations and calls on the international community to set up a united front to fight against the evil the leaders strongly condemned terrorism in all its forms and manifestations and called on the international community to set up a united front to fight against this evil they reaffirmed their commitment to undertake all measures to prevent and combat terrorism They insisted on the inadmissibility of double standards and countering terrorism and extremism as well as of the use of terrorist groups for political ends. The two leaders also called for an enhanced coordination between the state's efforts to strengthen the fight against the use of information and communication technologies for terrorist purposes. They agreed to maintain intensive contacts on the entire range of security issues through the National Security Council Secretariat and the Security Council of the Russian Federation. 
As per statement, the two countries have agreed on counter-terrorism cooperation and Russia has called for an early finalization of the Comprehensive Convention on International Terrorism or CCIT that was proposed by India more than two decades ago in UN. They agreed to intensify counter-terrorism cooperation in bilateral and multilateral formats and call for early finalization of the Comprehensive Convention on International Terrorism. Russia noted India's proposal to organize a global anti-terrorism conference. Russia has also stated to support India's candidacy for the permanent membership of a reformed UN Security Council. Although Pakistan was not pointed out directly in the statement, India and Russia have reaffirmed on their counter-terrorism efforts against all terror-sponsoring countries. There's a India-Russia counter-terrorism cooperation, particularly with reference to support in the international forums, is one part. There has to be support in the forums such as the SCO and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Thereafter, we can take Russia as a relationship with uh, Pakistan to advantage and ensure that uh, the pressure is brought down on Pakistan so that uh, the terrorism proxy to wars which Pakistan is waging against India, we contain that as well. India and a number of other countries are pushing for an early adoption of CCIT so that the fight against terrorism could be led by the UN. Recently, India has proposed holding of a global conference against terrorism to bring various nations on one platform to fight the menace affecting the entire world. Afghanistan has been enduring high-intensity attacks from Taliban insurgents ever since U.S. announced of progress being made in peace accords with Taliban negotiators. The two parties have agreed upon a draft of peace agreement that allows U.S. to withdraw foreign troops from the war-torn country. Afghan officials are now wary of the nation plunging into a civil war, citing a series of deadly terrorist attacks happening all over Afghanistan. We have a report. As U.S. negotiators heralded to forge peace deal between Taliban and Afghan government soon, the dreaded Taliban insurgents have raised the intensity of attacks in already devastated country. Just a few days ago, a massive tractor bomb ripped in the capital city of Kabul, followed by Taliban insurgents opening gunfire on civilians that killed 16 people and wounded over 119. As per accounts of survivors, the tractor bomb ripped at night in a residential area in Kabul Bay neighborhood in eastern Kabul. Popal, another survivor, lives only about 20 meters from the blast site. He was sleeping when the explosion occurred. The attack shook the capital city when the senior U.S. diplomat came to visit Afghan President Ashraf Ghani to brief him on a draft peace accord reached with Taliban that could see thousands of U.S. troops withdrawn from Afghanistan. The United States would withdraw almost 5,000 troops from Afghanistan and close five bases within 135 days under a draft peace accord agreed with the Taliban. 
The recent attacks have further raised concerns among Afghan officials and citizens, as well as the U.S. national security aides, about a U.S. withdrawal with fears Afghanistan could be plunged into a new civil war that could herald a return of Taliban rule and allow international militants, including Islamic State, to find a refuge. وزیت امنیتی افغانستان در یک بحران قرار داره آنچنانه که در تعودات قبلی ایالات متحده امریکا گفته بود عمل کرده نتانست سکتور امنیتی افغانستان به حد ضعیف است که نمیتانه حملات دشمن را دفع ترد کنه بینان ما گفته میتانیم که یک دفعه اول امنیت افغانستان یک کور می شدن و بعد از یک خروجشان می شدن خدا مشکل ما نداشتیم در این همچه حالت اگر می بره بدون ضرر افغانستان باقی نمی مانه. Afghanistan has been mired in high-intensity attacks from Taliban insurgents ever since the United States proclaimed to finalize peace agreement with Taliban for a phased withdrawal of foreign troops from the region. Just days before the drug bomb exploded in the capital city of Kabul, Taliban insurgents had mounted attacks in northern cities of Afghanistan, forcing Afghan forces to retaliate and secure reinforcement to prevent the insurgents from gaining control over parts of northern Baglan province. <laughs> شایدان شویدی. دامنی قمادان پا شمول پینزل اس نفر نور هم تپیان لرو. The presidential election due this month could witness a serious threat from the Taliban insurgents who are up against the Afghan government for years. Although ninth round of peace talks ended with a formulation of a draft peace accord with Taliban, it seems highly unlikely that Taliban insurgents would stop attacks in Afghanistan that too when foreign troops were pulled back to their respective nations. Pakistan's state-sponsored terrorism is targeting India through both its poles, Kashmir from the north and Tamil Nadu and Kerala from the south. Indian intelligence agencies recently informed that six terrorists affiliated with proscribed terror group lashkar e taiba have entered India through its Tamil Nadu state. The aim of their intrusion is to set up a base in the state to carry out terror activities in India, a report. India's Tamil Nadu state was recently put on high alert owing to Pakistan's increasing terror conspiracies against India. Information about a special input released recently by Indian intelligence agencies revealed that a group of six lashkar e taiba terrorists have entered India's Tamil Nadu state through Sri Lanka. The group consists of one Pakistani national and five Sri Lankan Tamil Muslims. Following the terror alert, the city went through extended security measures as airports and railway stations were put on tightened security checks. We have got the alert that uh, six member team of terrorists have come to Tamil Nadu and they are moving towards Kometur. In view of that, uh, we have taken uh, extensive bandubast. We have put the bandubast at uh, all the shopping malls, important temples and uh, all the important installations. We have also informed uh, army and air forces Pakistan, since its inception, is trying its best to create havoc in India, either by initiating unprecedented nonsensical disputes or by perpetrating terrorism in various states of India. The latest conspiracy busted by Indian security forces in Tamil Nadu gives clear hints that Islamabad is sponsoring terrorists to enter into India through different routes. Pakistan always tries to target India's soft spots so that it can use them to achieve its odious intentions of unleashing colossal amount of bloodshed in the country that would be nothing different from many terror attacks that have been perpetrated in various parts of India in past. For the last 70 years we are having a problem with Pakistan. It is a, a war-like war neighborhood for 70 years and hence Pakistan will always have a grudge on us and these grudges right from the time of partition and got in 1947 it got worse in 1971 when we partitioned Pakistan in turn so East and West Pakistan were separate and uh, Bangladesh was born from East Pakistan so on the grudge on the India has dismembered uh, Pakistan so that grudge is there and they took part of the grudge in Kargil 
but still it is going on and they keep talking about kashmir all the time uh, because of the religious angle the muslim angle or whatever but uh, now they are bleeding india slowly through kashmir but why they have entered tamil nadu because tamil nadu has also got a history of civil war and uh, violence like kashmir because of the ltt problem so they have linked that ltt problem and the last years or this year's easter sunday bombings in april that has uh, aggravated the situation and uh, they are trying to use it to their advantage so they linked in uh, t- uh, muslim terrorists from uh, sri lanka targeting youths through social media is the most convenient way being used by pakistan to spread the venom of terrorism terror groups like al qaeda and islamic state having their allegiance with pakistan approach gullible youths of india through social networking sites to propagate the idea of jihad social media is now a big uh, tool because it is isis uh, in uh, iraq and syria and then again the al qaeda in uh, Uh, the, the same parts and then the Taliban in Afghanistan, Pakistan area, they are very now hooked on to social media. Last five years they are very good active in social media and they are uh, lulling youths to take up the thing, inciting violence and terror and all that. Pakistan's unconditional support to terror outfits is posing grave threats to countries across Asia and the West. Jim Mattis, America's former defense secretary, recently slammed Pakistan for being the most dangerous country in the world. In his book called Call Sign Chaos, Mattis asserts that Pakistan's obsession with propagating radicalism in the society and the expense of Pakistan's nuclear warheads makes it very dangerous. He also castigated Pakistan for its approach to view all geopolitical developments from the prism of hostilities towards India. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Surbhi Sharma signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. <laughs>